Hi, I'm Dan Cordopassi. Welcome to the SP Consys build. In this series, I'm making HO scale models of five locomotives that I saw in the front of a Southern Pacific freight train in Truckee, California in 1993. In the last episode, I worked on the locomotive body and cab of my HO scale model of Cotton Belt 7787, a General Electric B30-7 locomotive. I'm basing this model on an HO scale Atlas B30-7. I photographed this locomotive in the summer of 1993. Doing a little research shows that this engine was repainted into SP's speed lettering scheme not long after my photo was taken. My intention is to model it as it appears in my photo. As it stands now, the locomotive body is mostly done. There's still a little work to do in the cab, and I haven't yet touched the sill. A number of people have been asking about a handrail video, and this locomotive is now at the point where I can do that. In this two-part video, I'm going to break with the usual format for this series and introduce some other models that aren't part of the Consist build but also need handrails. That'll give me some more examples, and it'll also help me get a few projects off my workbench. The SD45Rs that are also part of the Consist build aren't yet ready for this step, otherwise I'd include them too. For part one of this video, I'm going to use the Cotton Belt B30-7 for most of the examples. However, the basic process I use is pretty much the same, regardless of the specific type of diesel. I'll be talking about some special considerations for the other models as we go along. Before we go too far, I want to clarify a couple of terms I'll be using in case anyone isn't familiar. Handrails can mean the entire assembly, but also refers to the wire that makes up the railing. Stanchions are the vertical supports. My goals for this time are to talk about the materials and tools needed to make handrails, show how I bend handrails, and how I solder handrails. Bad looking handrails can really make a model look toy-like. On some models, the handrails are too thick in cross-section. Some handrails, especially plastic handrails, are often slightly warped. The vertical stanchions on this SD70M are a good example of what I'm talking about. The ones toward the front of the locomotive lean backwards. The stanchions near the rear lean forward. There's really no good way I know to fix this. Replacing the handrails with new, better ones will really improve the looks of this model. Plastic handrails can also be fragile and prone to breakage. Handrails made from metal parts are more durable. You don't always have to replace all the handrails. I used the stock plastic end handrails on the Atherin SD70M because I thought they looked okay. As I mentioned, I do want to make new ones for the sides though. There are two basic options when it comes to making your own handrails. There are kits available for some models, or you can buy your own materials and parts. This is a kit from Smoky Valley. This kit includes pre-bent brass handrail wire and brass stanchions. These are SD40-2 handrail kits from PS Pacific Fastmail. These kits have the stanchions and unbent brass wires, so you still have to do your own bending. Kits might be good options in some cases, but they can also be extremely hard to find. I'm not sure if any of these are still in production. My preferred method is to create my own, meaning that I need to buy the wire and stanchions separately. I like to make handrails out of brass wire. I also like to use brass or other solderable stanchions as much as possible. When the handrails are complete, they're very durable. For these HO scale models, I'll be using some 12 thousandths brass wire for the handrails. That scales out to about one inch in diameter. 10 thousandths wire might be closer to scale in some cases, but it isn't as strong. I don't mind compromising a little for the sake of having something that will stand up to handling, but you could use smaller wire if you wanted. For even more durability, you could go up to 15 thousandths wire, though this scales out to about 1.3 inches in diameter. I have done that though, and it still looks pretty good. Keep in mind that the handrails will get a little thicker when they're painted. Phosphor bronze wire would also work for handrails, but I haven't been able to find long enough pieces for the long hood handrails and larger diesels. I prefer straight wire. I've seen rolls of metal wire that are more economical, but then it would need to be straightened. There are two types of stanchions that I use, metal castings and photo etched. There are plastic stanchions, but I tend to avoid those because I've had too much trouble with breakage. In the past, I've often used DMD stanchions from Precision Scale. These are brass castings. Since the B30-7 is a GE product, those won't work. I'm going to try some photo etched GE stanchions from KV models. I use ordinary rosin core solder, the same type I use for electronics work. Some Tix Flux will often help get the solder flowing. I often work right on the models, so getting the soldering done quickly before the heat can start melting plastic is essential. I found that the flux is especially necessary on the precision scale stanchions. In the past, these were shiny brass. But these days they are dull and I suspect the brass is mixed with something else that makes it harder to solder. Since I'm working with wire, I'll need some wire cutters. For bending the wire, I'll use needle nose pliers. Sometimes having more than one pair of pliers can be handy. Some cutters for photo etch parts are useful for removing photo etch stanchions from the frets. 
Files are good for removing burrs and prepping the stanchions, especially the cast type. Small drills, a pin vise, and a hobby knife can also be useful. I'll also need a good soldering iron. A small pencil type soldering iron works fine. Mine is a 25 watt model from Weller. A resistance soldering tool can also work. If the plastic handrails that came with the model look like they're the correct shape, then I'll use those as a bending guide. You could also use scale drawings as a guide if they're available. Personally, I find it easier to work from a three-dimensional pattern since some of the bends can be complex. In the case of my B30-7, I either misplaced or discarded the plastic side handrails. Thankfully, I have an Atlas B23-7 which has the same handrails, so I can use that model as a guide. For sharp bends, hold the wire very close to the pliers. For softer, more rounded bends, hold the wire a little further away. The trick is to go slowly and compare the part you're bending to whatever you're using as a guide after every bend. If you make a mistake, don't panic. The brass is often forgiving enough to be straightened and rebent in a slightly different spot. If you've bent something that's not fixable, don't toss it away immediately. Sometimes you can still use the wire for a shorter handrail or, worst case, as a glue applicator. The Atlas B30-7 already has small holes drilled in the cab for the handrail wire. If I've modified the step wells like I did on this Kato GP35 to get rid of the oversized holes for the stock handrails, then some filing and sanding may be needed. Bits of plastic rod can be useful for plugging oversized holes in Kato cabs as well. Once the holes are filled, I'll drill new smaller holes with a pin vise. I used a cannon cab on my model of cotton belt GP35R4203, so I'll need to drill my own holes in the sides. I very carefully measure and mark the locations before drilling. Most of the time I can make use of the factory stanchion pin locations. The left side is some Kato units where there are some taller stanchions is an exception. The Kato stanchion pins are higher than the ones in the precision scale tall stanchions. Since I've built quite a few Kato GP35s and have a few more to do, I made myself this custom drilling template to make new holes at a uniform distance below the originals. The stanchions will cover the upper holes so I don't usually bother filling them. For the B30-7, I'm going to build the side handrails first. I'll start by cutting some of the KV model stanchions off the fret with photo etch shears. Be careful not to cut off the mounting pin at the bottom of the stanchion. The KV model's handrail stanchions come in three lengths, 44 inch, 46 inch, and 48 inch. The scale 48 inch stanchions are the best match for the ones in my Atlas B23-7, so I'll use those. I'll use needle nose pliers to bend the mounting pin at a right angle. Then I'll grip the flat part of the top about halfway along its length and fold it over. This part will wrap around the handrail wire. I've put all the bent stanchions in a plastic bag so I don't lose them. To make the handrail itself, I'll start by picking out a piece of 12 thousandths brass wire that doesn't have any severe bends in it. This one has a slight curve on one end, but I can work with that. For side handrails, I usually find it easier to start at the end near the step wells, since that's usually where the most complex bends are. As I mentioned earlier, I'll be using my Atlas SPB23-7 as a template. The first bends, where the handrail attaches to the step well, are a little tricky because they're so small. If you make a mistake here, at least you haven't wasted too much wire. After a couple of false starts, I found that a small flat-bladed screwdriver can be used instead of a finger to push the wire into a bent shape for super tight spots. These GE handrails are more complicated in the step well area than most EMD units. For the next bend, I'll hold the wire against the model and very carefully position the pliers. I'll use my finger to make a slight bend. This is a sharp crease, so I'll put my finger right on the pliers. If the angle isn't quite right, that's okay. It can be adjusted later. It's more important to get the bend in the right place. It turns out I didn't do that. Thankfully, the brass is fairly forgiving. I'll straighten the wire, move the pliers, and bend it again. From here on out, I'll make one bend at a time, slowly progressing down the length of the handrail. The rounder bend where the handrail transitions from vertical to horizontal is a little tricky since it's a soft bend, and looking down from the top it also angles out a little. I'll grip the wire farther from the pliers to make the more rounded bend. So far so good. It's important to check the angles, and also to make sure that the vertical distance between the handrail and the attachment point in the step well is correct. Now I've made the sharper bend where the angle part of the handrail turns to run parallel to the sides of the locomotive. Getting to this point is usually the hardest part of the bending phase, since near the step wells, handrails often have a lot of bends very close together. Don't worry too much if you put a slight curve or two in the longer part of the wire as you've been bending it. As long as it's not severe, it should be okay. Next, I can turn my attention to the Z-bend about one-third of the way back along the long hood behind the cab. After one more bend where the handrail enters the hole in the cab, I'll cut off the excess wire. Now comes the moment of truth. 
I've temporarily put the handrail on the model. It looks good so far. I'm test fitting one of the KV stanchions and it also looks pretty good. There's enough wire left over that I should be able to make the front handrail out of the same piece. The front handrails have a lot of bends in close proximity. The best advice I can give is to work slowly and make one bend at a time. On this particular model, I found that the holes that hold the handrails and the step wells are very shallow. Drilling them a little deeper with a number 78 or 79 bit helps to hold the brass wire better. I usually solder the handrails right on the model. This requires working quickly so I don't melt the shell. If you have a secondary shell that you don't care about, you could use that instead. Most of the time, for me anyway, that's not the case. Because it keeps wanting to fall off, I've temporarily taped the B30-7 cab to the sill. The shell is fully seated and clipped into the sill as well. I'm folding up a couple layers of paper toweling and taping it to the sides of the long hood. This should help to insulate the model against any glancing blows from the soldering iron. Now I can temporarily attach one of the handrails. I'll tape each end to help hold it in place. Getting the first couple of stanchions is always the hardest. Just like I do with bending, I usually find it easier to start at one end and work my way to the other. I'm going to start on the cab end this time. I've hooked one of the KV stanchions over the handrail and inserted the bottom pin into the hole in the shell. I'll apply a little Tix Flux to the joint. Now I'll solder the joint. As I mentioned, working quickly is the key to avoid damaging the shell. The stanchion isn't quite straight. I'll reheat the joint and move it a little until I'm happy with it. When I'm satisfied, I'll put in the next stanchion. Oops, it looks like I got some flux on the front of a stanchion and the solder spread too far. I'll discard that one and start over. From here on out, it's just repetition until I get them all done. The KV stanchions are very lightweight and tend to move around. Taping the bottoms down as I'm soldering helps. After doing a few more KV stanchions, I noticed I was having a little trouble getting the handrail to stay parallel to the sides of the long hood. I got rid of the paper towel and substituted one of the foam handrail protectors that come with many diesel models. This seems to be holding the alignment better. In some cases, the place where I pre-folded the tops of the stanchions was too high. I had to redo the bend a little lower down. Finally, the handrail is complete. One test is that it should hold together when removed from the model. If any stanchions are loose, I'd have to put it back on the model and then re-solder them. I'll use a file to very gently remove any excess solder. This whole assembly is easily bent, so I need to use a light touch. The technique for the short hood handrails is similar, but there's only one stanchion per side on this model. Now the side handrails for the B30-7 are complete. I'm going to stop here for now and pick it back up in the next episode. Custom handrails can be fabricated using basic tools that many modelers already have. It's likely if you've been in the model train hobby for a while, you already have most of what you need. Though handrail kits for some models do exist, they can be hard to find. Thankfully, there are a variety of commercial handrail stanchions on the market. Using those in combination with brass wire makes it possible to fabricate almost any handrail you might need. Bending your own handrail wire can take some practice. Thankfully, brass is forgiving enough that small mistakes can often be corrected. If your first attempt doesn't turn out, you can always try again. Save the scrap wire as it can still sometimes be useful for other projects. That's it for now. Next time I'll build the end handrails for the B30-7 and talk about building handrails for some of the other models. If you like this video, then please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Stay tuned and thanks for watching. <laughs>